Hi, Scott Summer. Welcome to the Genetic Genius Podcast. I'm so excited to have you as a guest today. Thank you, Dr. Luli. I'm so glad to be here. This is awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited for our conversation today. We're going to be diving deep into the electrical components of the body, which is one of my most, I don't know, favorite topics because <laughs> I'm all about photons and energy. So before we get um, really deep into that conversation, Scott, I'd love for you to just uh, talk about your background, introduce yourself to the listeners so we can just get to know you a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically, it started with my dad, my whole history of, you know, how he got into such passionate work and health and wellness. My dad came from Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, he was born there and he had a lot of problems with his leg growing up. And mm. so he used to spend, you know, months at a time in bed, not knowing the cause of his leg problem, which led to an appendix that finally burst in the middle of a snowstorm. I know it sounds like a movie, but <laughs> that's really what happened to him. And uh, and then uh, he really decided after that hospital visit that he was determined to never visit a hospital ever again. Mm. So he wasn't really that excited about, you know, the, the effects of drugs and, and although it did save his life, which mm -hmm. I'm grateful for. Then he came to California. And then the story continues with the, the father that he never knew that he met, which is the grandfather I never met and never knew because this father, the grandfather died from a heart attack. When he shortly arrived, he found him dead on the floor of a heart attack, if you can imagine. Mm. So that was the beginning of my life as far as the passion for nutrition, because my dad made that decision that day. And he decided that he had to do something different about his life, make a difference so that he wouldn't end up like his father dying from a heart attack in his 50s, if you can imagine. Wow, it's so That's young. Too early, right? Mm -hmm. And plus, I never met that grandfather, you know, so we have to really make the connection to how we affect other people, you know, mm -hmm. our longevity and how it makes a difference, you know, in people around us. Mm -hmm. So he got into bodybuilding in Sacramento, which is where I was born and raised, and organic farming. And so I was raised on the farm, except that I had a problem. And that was when I was born, I had an epilepsy. Mm. At about 18 months, they realized I started having seizures when I had too much sun and when I get tired. And so I'd been given this label at age nine. I remember going to my pediatrician and him telling me, son, you will never have a normal life unless mm. you fix this. Wow. And so I was just depressing that day yeah. I went home and I was just thinking, wow, you know, it sounds like there's no hope. And so I went upstairs to my room and said a prayer, I really believe in that and mm -hmm. the power of prayer. And in that prayer, I prayed for the powers of Superman. <laughs> and so that may sound kind of funny, but for a nine-year-old, you right. know, that's the best I could do. <laughs> yeah, said, exactly. Well, I just pray for x-ray vision to find out what's <laughs> wrong with my body and my brain. Mm -hmm. And so in that prayer, I also promised that once I was cured, because I felt at that moment that I would be cured someday, I didn't know how, that I would help humanity. And then I would mm. give my gifts, you know, of healing back to the world. And so that was really, that's always been my, my, you know, mantra, if you will, or belief at this point. And that's my passion. So at age 15, I walked into a hospital to be retested for epilepsy. And uh, that day I walked out free and clear, never to return to me ever again. Wow. So I know I like to be sick. Yeah. Electrical imbalance, because that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. and brain, you know, and I really believe that food is medicine. And then I realized that, you know, I was really healed. You know, it was a miracle. So then I continued on with my interest in health and nutrition because of my dad and the farm that I grew up on, the five acres in Elk Grove. And my interest of just, you know, being able to walk the Garden of Eden, if you will. And that's why <laughs> I grew up. That was my foundation of health. Mm -hmm. And that's what I tell our patients. You know, that's what we do. That's how I grew up. You know, it's just reading Adele Davis. Anyone out there that remembers Adele Davis? It was a while back. <laughs> but she was a nutritionist in the 60s and Jack LaLanne, you know, good old Jack, you know, <laughs> right, totally changed the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so I realized that fitness and food were amazing and that food from good soil made the difference. Like my dad always said, is the soil makes the difference. That's right. And so, <laughs> so with that said, I continued on and I studied, you know, start off in electrical engineering and chemistry in college and and I thought that I would do this kind of as a hobby. I thought it was more like a hobby. I didn't know how to branch into West, you know, Eastern or natural medicine. 
And so I finally uh, switched my major to nutritional science, excuse me, to chemistry and uh, pre-med and biochemistry at Davis. Mm -hmm. And so it was there that I finally um, decided that uh, that was the best way. At the time, I thought that I would just become an MD and then uh, jump the fence, go to the other side and figure out the natural stuff. <laughs> and so what I realized that wasn't such a good idea. And until I finally read this book at Davis on energy medicine, the electricity of the body and Asian medicine, if you will, traditional Chinese medicine. And so that book really talked about the body being electric. And I can tell you, honestly, Dr. Lulu, that I sat there and uh, read that book for like four hours. <laughs> I couldn't leave the spot. I was mm -hmm. so, because I'd given all this information all my life, but nothing about electricity. And so that's, as we segue into this, you know, it was just uh, shocking, if you will. And yeah. so, so then I moved on to, you know, nutritional science at Davis, because I figured if I really learned even more about food, that I could help change the life of many people. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to Eastern medicine. And of course, I learned about all the pathways and how the organs are just like a battery. And then the electrical circuits are how they're connected, like the internet. And the <laughs> brain is a good example of that, this mm -hmm. internet pathway. And uh, so then I continued on, I studied kinesiology and uh, iridology. And so finally, with all of my engineering, I integrated all of these therapies and assessment tools, including an electrical scanner that we use called the Zyto and the Nest Scan, which I'll talk about. Mm -hmm. and we use this as tools to find out how someone's electricity is flowing through their body. And so that's really how I kind of arrived at this point. That's the short version. <laughs> and uh, just excited to share it with with everyone. Yeah. Oh, that's a fascinating story, Scott. I love it. You know, it's amazing how we get started on a journey, which we might never have realized could be a possibility, right? <laughs> yes, that is yeah. so true. Yes. And I like how you're, you started on this kind of science path, but you had the health and the science, and now they're kind of merged into one and the electrical engineering, like, is great. It's fascinating. I can't wait for us to talk more about it. So thank you for sharing such as a profound story too. You know, it's like all ingrained through your family history. Yes. Thank you so much. In fact, I really like what you just said. And that was about the science and the art, you know, because I really believe that doctors of our past, you know, physicians that were really connected to the earth and natural mm -hmm. methods really were artists and scientists together. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important, you know, to understand that. Yeah, totally. You know, that part, we have our different parts of our brain, right? And how we get energized and those electrical currents get um, excited. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the body's electrical system. So how does that function? Because I think that's a great kind of like platform for us to jump off of, you know, we, the body is made up of electricity, basically. <laughs> so yes. how, does, how does that function? And in a way that the, the listeners can kind of visualize it or get a handle on it easily. Yeah, exactly. So I, I really like analogies. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good, great question. And I would say, let's use the example of the earth and our body. Mm -hmm. And so the ancients, you know, really, that's how they discovered these problems, like, or solutions, they even discovered like the kidney bean looks like the kidney and how that <laughs> helps us, right? So the same mm -hmm. concept of electricity. So the ancients looked at the earth. And when you think about it now, scientifically, we can prove that the earth is like 70% water, right? But our bodies are the same. We're like mm -hmm. 70 to 75% water. So there's water. That makes sense. And then there's electrolytes. You know, we need minerals or like spark mm -hmm. plugs. You right. know, so the earth <laughs> has minerals, you know, salt we know is very important for us and the minerals we get from the soil. And our bodies also have to have in our blood electrolytes mm -hmm. to be able to keep the spark of life. So mm -hmm. in a sense, it's just like a battery. You know, we have right. electrolytes, <laughs> and we have water. And so that's really the first part is a battery. So whether or not it be in your brain, which is actually 80%, you know, closer to a higher percentage of water, which is why it's so important. You can't think electrically. <laughs> you don't right. have water, right? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't work too well. <laughs> and then, uh, so that's the first part. And then the second part is just how these uh, circuits, there are circuits besides the battery part, you know, which I call like each organ has like its own battery mm -hmm. in Asian medicine. Mm -hmm. And then the circuits are how they're connected. So they communicate, you know, through hormones, 
in the blood, but they also communicate through these electrical pathways that have finally been proven through science and MRIs have proven that acupuncture points are points where electricity clusters and that's different than any other cell in the body, which is why we, they call them acupuncture points. Mm -hmm. And then uh, legend has it that uh, where things started was an ancient warrior in China, supposedly, <laughs> you know, who knows how true this is, but it sounds good. <laughs> but it's always great to have a story. <laughs> exactly. It's a good bear story, right? <laughs> right. So he was like in, you know, in a battle and then he leaned over on his sword on the other side. It's not sharp, of course. The <laughs> right. Part of it. And and he just pushed on an acupressure point when he had digestive problems mm -hmm. and his stomach problem went away. And then that, you know, of course, that's how we discover things is, you know, right. making connections. <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of how it started that there's acupuncture points can be activated many different ways, activating the electrical system like a switch. And there's a battery that, you know, powers the whole body. Mm, that's great. What a great explanation. And, you know, I really like how you talked about each organ being its own battery, because that's a really fascinating way to think about the system. Because I think a lot of people, they, they're tuned out <laughs> from, you know, their, how their brain and body are even connected. They're totally disconnected. <laughs> and so if they think about it as like having these little pockets of batteries or energy centers, as you described it, I think that's a great way for people to have a visualization of what's going on inside <laughs> instead of having a little camera <laughs> or our body being see-through, which would be great. I'd love that. <laughs> right. Wouldn't that be super? <laughs> yeah, it'd be so cool in a really gross yeah. way, but it'd be cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> Might see more than you want to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So when the brain is then, as you mentioned, is kind of like the communication center. So it's sending out communication to these other battery centers. And so how do you mentioned how that fit into the ancient um, practice of medicine, but how did that kind of like bring forward into today where we're still practicing this kind of like, you know, electrical medicine? <laughs> yes. So I would say basically, so the integration is now with science, you know, like, for instance, mm -hmm. I can use my practice, you know, as an example. So now I can show a patient do an electrical scan on them, which is a hand scanner known as the Zyto. Mm -hmm. That's one scanner I use. And then I can show them how each battery to, is connected to each organ mm -hmm. and how well they're doing. If they're mm -hmm. thriving, then their organs are going to be balanced. If they're not, they might have hot organs that are overworking and they might have weak organs that are undercharged. Mm -hmm. And I think the cell phone is a perfect example. Another analogy mm -hmm. would be like a cell phone. You know, we're kind of like receivers, like a cell phone receives signals, mm -hmm. but it's also a transmitter. It has circuits and it has a battery. So if you just start thinking of yourself like a cell phone, you know, like, you know, <laughs> that there's, there's integration, you know, mm -hmm. and that, you know, when you dial certain phone numbers, if you will, through acupuncture, which is something we do as well, that we're activating the electrical system. And mm -hmm. you brought up a good point about the brain and the connection with the body. But now we know there's like this nerve net, which is these acupuncture circuits. Mm -hmm. And so really it's like the whole body is integrated and connected. So the brain is only one part of it, but we know now even the gut, you know, the gut brain connection, mm -hmm. the emotional connection in the middle, that they're really three brains, right? You know, which is the <laughs> gut, the emotions and the brain, mm -hmm. the brain, brain. So the brain, brain. So, yeah, exactly. So it's just so you know, connected in so, in, in so many ways that there are just multiple connections electrically. Mm, that's great. And so if it, say we're, we're all this uh, functioning neural net or network. So how um, does it happen that then say that there's a communication breakdown or there is a change in the electrical communication or impulse? And why does there become that block and then, and we'll dive into how we can clear that block, but what, what happens in that block? How does it even start? And then how does that change the electrical systems function? Yeah, that's a great point. So I would say that uh, there are 13 reasons why and So we <laughs> always test, you know, for patients in right. what they are. so that that's a lot, right? right? But I break it down to three different reasons, you mm -hmm. know, basic categories. One is toxicity which are say chemicals, you know, and metals, mm -hmm. right? So things are toxic to the body. So literally, you know, drinking out of plastic water bottles, or taking, you know, chlorine showers, or drinking tap water, as an example, or EMFs, you know, mm -hmm. those things are 
EMFs are a little different, but those are toxicity chemicals in our environment that we ingest, get through our food, through pesticides, mm -hmm. so uh, chemicals and metals, and those can, you know, really create shorts. Right. And so the thing is, is it acts more like an electrical storm. Like if you're in the middle of a storm and your light started to flicker, mm -hmm. it's not as obvious to most people. Like you said, most people are not aware of what's going on to them. <laughs> right. and they don't understand that they're starting to short out. Right. Because so, it's not like, you know, lights out, you know, it's not like you just, right. everything doesn't like, go black all at once. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, I lost my kidneys. You know, I'll yeah. be right back. You know? right. Yeah. Call me later work. on your side. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. Exactly. So it doesn't work that way. So it's more like a dimmer switch, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of slowly dimmering back and forth or electrical shorts. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one category is toxicity, you mm -hmm. know, metals in our mouth, fluoride, you mm -hmm. know, in, in the water, mm. which is why we need filters. And mm -hmm. so that's one category. And then the other is, and that would also be EMFs, I would say, consider that like as well. But then yeah. there's, you know, immune challenges. Mm -hmm. So immune challenges, like most people don't realize they have parasites if they have rashes or they, you know, wake up in the middle of the night, their excessive hunger. Mm -hmm. I had one guy that a patient years ago that he woke up and there was bowls of cereal across his front, you know, <laughs> you know, kitchen. Yeah. And he was ready to call the police. And he was like, you know, he was convinced <laughs> that somebody broke in and ate all these bowls of cereal. But it was him. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, so before he made the call, he's like, well, wait a minute. You know, as he woke up, he said, <laughs> maybe it's me. And so he realized he was a stress eater at night mm. and that he had a tapeworm. Oh yeah. So wow. that's an example of <laughs> right. something we had to Hungry take tapeworm. care of. <laughs> yeah. So we got rid of the appetite at night when we fixed that. <laughs> so, you know, the viruses, of course, that's a big topic these days. Right. There are thousands <laughs> of millions of viruses that have existed since the beginning of time, bacteria, yeast and candida mm -hmm. and mold, you know, mm -hmm. are really big. Yeah. So those are other things that are the second category that can really stress our electrical system more than we realize. So wherever they land, in our sinuses, then they're going to affect electrically our eyes, mm -hmm. everything around that area, even our thinking, our allergies could be triggered by that. If we have rashes in certain areas like our abdomen, that's an electrical break. Mm -hmm. Because when electricity flows, we have good skin, no pain. And so that's how we can define good electrical flow is no pain, good skin, we feel great, we have good color. Mm -hmm. And we awake when we should wake and we go to sleep when we should go to sleep. Mm. and digestion is easy right <laughs> when those things don't happen then we have electrical breaks mm -hmm. that would be an example so the last part is electrical problems that are related to scars mm. so a lot of times we don't realize that scars can affect us so i found everything from tattoos so it doesn't mean you have to remove the tattoo but we have to treat it with you know like a laser a cold mm -hmm. laser mm, or yeah. an oil or light therapy basically and an oil for several months then there's other scars from injury or uh, surgeries, you know, right. that affect us. So that's also important because a scar can be so small from our childhood, mm -hmm. but yet later on in life it can cause this electrical imbalance. Mm -hmm. And so, and then of course, I'd also include like the EMF once again, Wi-Fi, EMF, mm -hmm. 5G cell phone towers. Right. And so once again, our body's like a cell phone, so we can lose the signal. We can get a dead battery <laughs> and we can just, you know, things can go wrong you know, mm -hmm. we can lose the call. Yeah. And uh, so that's the best example of all those things. And so anyway, that's, that's basically the three reasons why this electrical system and then emotions, I would say, kind of throw that in the toxic category <laughs> right. of toxicity, yeah, toxic right? Emotions, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> toxic people, our mm -hmm. environment, you know, toxic mm -hmm. environment. So emotions can blow a circuit. I right. Mean, you know, yeah. You Boom. Somebody stressing <laughs> you, wrong <laughs> boss, right? <laughs> 50 bears are chasing you. Yeah, exactly. And what about trauma? What uh, category does that go into the toxicity category as well? Or is that more kind of like in the emotional scar category? Yeah, good question. I would say, yeah, the trauma, uh, physical trauma would be, uh, could be both. It could mm -hmm. actually be the electrical scarring inside internally, mm -hmm. if there's not a physical scar outside. So we deal with that too, mm -hmm. with light therapy and oils. And then and then there's an emotional toxic toxicity with that too, like a car accident where somebody lost their spleen, you know, mm -hmm, and had right. a trauma to the spleen. And then yeah. yet they still have the emotions of PTSD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely.
Wow, yeah. that's great. I love those three categories because that's an easy way to kind of break it down and to think about it because especially with our toxic environment <laughs> that we all live in now, especially as we're moving way more into doing a much more online aspect of things and the Wi-Fi and EMFs like you mentioned. One thing I wanted to ask too about, so we have the, let's talk about the inside of the cell a little bit. So we have our powerhouse, the mitochondria of, and the DNA. How is that affected by the electrical charge of our system? And are those like individual little batteries <laughs> or are they getting some communication from the other organs in the body? Yeah, actually both, you know, so we are only as healthy. I love this saying, you know, it's something that I say a lot is we're only as healthy as our cells, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, organs and tissues are made out of cells. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, you know, so some people get, you know, a sign of deep electrical problems mm. is we use a something called an e power belt. So to define what that is, it's, uh, it's from Japan. And it's a belt, literally mm -hmm. a, a blue belt that we put around somebody and then we can turn it on and then it, it creates an electrical uh, wave that charges the organs. Mm. And so I can always tell with that diagnostically, it's a great test mm -hmm. to see how the cells are charged. And so we can actually have a light pin that lights up and the farther away the pin lights up, if you can imagine it's a steel pin mm -hmm. with a light on the end, like a light bulb. And the brighter that gets the farther away from the belt on your body, the better your cells are charged. Oh, that makes so, sense. Yeah. So that's a good way to kind of an analogy, an example. And mm -hmm. so, so when people get really tired, usually fatigue and sleep mm -hmm. is the, I say the connection, you know, sleep and energy are connected. Right. And then you can't digest your food and you start gaining weight. Usually those five things, you know, digestion, elimination, energy and sleep, and then finally metabolism. Mm -hmm. When those five things go out, then you know you have cellular problems. Right. And that's when the mitochondria is struggling to produce energy because mm -hmm. that's where it comes from, right? Yeah. So you really do have, like you said, that was a great example is uh, small little batteries connected <laughs> to a bigger battery, which is why we're all integrated, right? right. Our whole body <laughs> is connected. Yeah. And then there's the outside energy field, mm -hmm. which you know we can get to when we're ready with that. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. I was just going to ask you about that. So if we are own individual batteries on the planet, <laughs> right. And then how are we connected? Like you said, so we have this greater energy field and then that's connected to others around us. Right. And so we're always, how's that changing how our battery functions and how do we influence the batteries of those around us? <laughs> Wow. That's really deep. I like that. I love where this is going. <laughs> right. Diving deep in right <laughs> yeah, away. Cool. It's not full around here. Right. So, yeah. so no, I like that. So we, you know, you are kind of like an energy bubble. Let's mm -hmm. use the analogy of bubble, which means that, you know, you're inside this bubble, if you will. And then, so we do have an electric field around us. Mm -hmm. So it's called a morphogenic field is some, some people call it an aura. So yeah, so when people are healthy, they have, you know, just like you only have as much energy, like I said, like a healthy cell. So mm -hmm. if all your cells are like flashlights, mm -hmm. let's use that example, then the flashlights together produce a healthy beam of light, just mm -hmm. like, you know, in the nighttime and right. Vegas and the lights are shining, you know, <laughs> but, but on the other hand, when people are missing light and energy, then they have a weak field. So mm -hmm. how does that affect us is that for one, things can get inside of us mm. from the outside because our energy field is down. So just like this bubble, that has distortions in it. Mm -hmm. A good example would be, you know, like a, a balloon that's sort of losing air or a mm -hmm. big ball, you know, beach ball would be right. better. Loses air in certain areas and starts to deflate. So it's kind of caved in in different areas and then better in other areas. So wherever it's caved in is where the weakness happens. Mm. So if you have a caving in, if you will, that I find somebody when I use kinesiology, right. To test them with muscle testing. Mm -hmm. Then I can find an electrical circuit, maybe say around the sinuses. Mm -hmm. So if we don't fix that circuit, then the way it affects them is they keep getting sinus infections or they right. keep snoring at night mm -hmm. or they have macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. So we know wherever you have the disease, wherever it's the pancreas, the eyes or the brain, electrically is where, you know, the weakness will follow. So it right. means there's lack of power electrically. Mm -hmm. the, the second part is, so we've got these, you know, we're living in a bubble, an energy mm -hmm. bubble, 
Mm -hmm. And by the way, that energy bubble really comes from the inside out, you know? Right. And then mm -hmm. it also comes from the outside in because the energy flows from the inside out and the outside in. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're dynamic. Our bodies are constantly biodynamic, trying to find equilibrium. You know, our mm -hmm. pH of our blood, it has to be constant. Otherwise we'll die. <laughs> and, you know, we have to have so much oxygen. So right. the, body the necessities. <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. Pretty important. So, so then, uh, you know, so when you interact with somebody, you can tell when you can connect with them, like with their bubble mm -hmm. and their energy bubble, like if they're high and vibrant and alive, then you feel that energy. They give mm -hmm. you energy. But if somebody is an energy vampire and they mm -hmm. have deflated bubble, they're just going to pull your energy in mm -hmm. and you're going to say, wow, you know, that conversation was really like defeating and I have no energy now. I feel like I've just <laughs> been drained, you know, mm -hmm. deflated, lay down, <laughs> need to go home, take a nap. <laughs> yeah, totally. So that's really how, you know, how we're affected by other mm -hmm. people. And then the third way I would say would be the earth. You know, the earth mm -hmm. is the biggest bubble of all that we live on a big bubble <laughs> right. of energy, Right. And we're little bubbles floating around on the big bubble. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with that said, that's why it's so important. You know, I really believe in my book, I talk about how we are disconnected, you know, when we started with cars and, you know, rubber mm -hmm. and all of that, you know, petroleum products, it really separated us, you know, shoes, mm -hmm. rubber shoes and all. It allowed us to walk further, but we also went from farming connected to the earth and grounding something mm. I'm sure you've probably talked about before mm -hmm. uh, when, we're, when we're connected to the electrical source of the earth, we touch the earth or a tree, then we get mm. grounded electrical flow, mm -hmm. you know, from the earth, vice versa, because it's yeah. the biggest battery we have. <laughs> right. We're right. Connecting to the biggest battery. <laughs> Absolutely. So why not go big, right? That's right. <laughs> and then, but on the other hand, you know, if we don't do that and we, you know, get static electricity and we get mm -hmm. dehydrated and you can start to feel tired in front of a computer, right. then we know we've got too much of the wrong energy and our bubble is being deflated mm -hmm. and we're disconnected from the biggest battery source there is, including the sun. Right. So the sun is the other bubble, if you will, that gives us energy. That's why we need air and sun and the soil. Mm hmm. Yeah. So key. Oh, that was great. I love those analogies of the different bubbles and then the big earth, the earth being the big bubble and us, you know, being on it because it has, it's a great way to think about it. And I got this image of it's the same way of inside of us, you know, how we we're our body is a bubble. And then we have all the little bubbles inside <laughs> all the cells and they're all communicating and doing their job and they're tapping in to the energy or the grounding inside us. What are some of the methods that you use in your practice for helping um, your patients with grounding? Yes. Yeah, so I, you know, I always recommend that they, you know, of course, get outside, mm -hmm. you know, because I feel like the sun is the first part, you know, we don't get enough right. sun. Yeah. And that's why I moved from Seattle. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I was like, no more Seattle. <laughs> I love Seattle, but I needed lots of sun. <laughs> I, I, amen. I, yeah. I believe you. My wife is from Southern California and I'm from Northern. And mm -hmm. so yeah, she's got to have sun and I do too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So yeah, I would say, I always tell them, you know, go to a park or something with nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best thing you do is sit down and read a book, you know, lean against a tree, then you mm -hmm. get double, you know, because the tree is rooted in the ground mm -hmm. and you're getting the grounding from the tree, which is great. Also tell them if you're a businessman or woman and you don't have a lot of time, mm -hmm. then just lean against a tree. Just don't mm -hmm. make it too obvious. Don't, you don't have to hug the tree, you know, <laughs> or you can, <laughs> you could, you could hug the tree, right. <laughs> but, uh, but the point is that you just make contact, you know, like mm -hmm. a grounding cord. Then also I recommend if somebody lives on a second story, it's always a good idea to get a grounding mat. Mm -hmm. They can order them through, you know, earthing mm -hmm. companies. And then right. you just make sure it's, a, you have a ground in your house and then just put it on your bed. Mm -hmm. And you're done. And then we use things like the beamer mat mm -hmm. and the bio mat mm -hmm. uh, for helping with that too. So there's a lot of therapies they can get as well. Nice. So yeah, those are kind of the main main ways. And just take your shoes off and right stand in Go the grass barefooting. <laughs> barefooting. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. You know, I'm a super nature lover myself, and I work at a farm. And I, you know, just a hundred hundred percent believe that when we connect to the earth, it changes. And I see that with the veterans that come out to the farm that I work at, you know, it's just like changes their whole, even just like a, in five minutes, once they're connected to the plants and the energy around them, they just have a, it's like a whole wash, <laughs> you know, of new energy goes over them. So yeah, I totally agree with that. That is 
so awesome that you're doing that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, they say uh, a stat on that is that uh, they say that gardeners and farmers, you know, gardeners in particular, because, you know, you could be a farmer on a tractor. Right. <laughs> connected, right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, people that do gardening are actually, they say, you know, three times happier and they're actually the happiest people on the earth are people mm -hmm. who do gardening. Yeah. Like my dad. Yep. Yep. That explains everything. <laughs> yep, it does. <laughs> okay. So we have this electrical system inside us. So how do we access the electrical system to recharge it? <laughs> I think you were mentioning that a little bit before, but I'd like us to kind of like dive a little bit deeper. Cause I think, you know, we're the listeners and myself getting this image of we're a battery, but yes. so how do we charge the battery, <laughs> especially in now in this time of during, you know, a change in the pandemic on the planet? I think more people are looking for ways to recharge and even quicker, you know, not that health is a quickens, a quicker pace. I don't want to say that, but I think tools that people can have to recharge that battery. Yeah, no, that's true. That's a really good point. Like, uh, you know, a great way that you just said it, like, you know, you can, I believe in synergy, mm -hmm. you know, in everything we do. So you can synergize your life mm -hmm. by doing multiple things like, you know, and so my wife, when I first met her, she told me about a supercharged cord, you know, for mm -hmm. a phone. And I had no idea that even existed, that that was a thing, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not super IT, you know, in that way. Yeah. And so uh, she said, Oh no, this is supercharged. It'll charge your phone faster than anything. You know, like a couple hours it'd be charged. I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, that's amazing. So this is a way to supercharge. That would be number one is uh, you want to make sure you get enough water. Mm. So make sure it's filtered water. Mm -hmm. Reverse osmosis isn't a good idea or distilled water unless you add minerals to it. Right. So that's one thing because that's a good way to, you know, lessen your battery. Mm -hmm. So mineral spring water that's filtered is great. You also want to add minerals like through salt. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, uh, real salt is a really great source and Himalayan salt, black mm -hmm. salt from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, vary your salts too. Make sure you mix them up a little bit mm -hmm. so you don't keep doing the same. I know it's, we're taught on TV that not to do salt, but we need minerals. You know, we're a we battery. Need it. <laughs> yeah, we do. Exactly. We do. Yeah. Healthy, good salt. <laughs> exactly. So, so then also make sure you get on a mineral supplement too, like, or eat, you know, like kelp. Mm -hmm. is really good. Like kelp chips mm -hmm. are organic are really good sources of minerals and iodine to keep your thyroid. Cause your thyroid is the accelerator mm -hmm. of the battery. You know, it That's accelerates right. <laughs> everything. So if your, your thyroid is low, you got trouble mm -hmm. for everything is affected, you know, from your sleep to your hair, to your eyes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so those are the main things. And then I would say grounding, like we talked about getting out in the sun, getting out mm -hmm. in nature, you know, every day, just go outside. The one thing that my wife and I always do for lunch, you know, because we work together in the clinic. Fortunately, that's a blessing, but we just, uh, we go outside. We always make sure we go outside and have lunch outside, take our shoes off or whatever it might be to, to get grounded. Mm. And uh, so it's important to get outside where you're working and uh, take advantage of that. I mean, it's just like, it's really important. And I think also something simple as a sunset or sunrise also mm -hmm. i've not mm -hmm. you know feel like visually we believe in asian ancient medicine that mm -hmm. you can be charged by color you know like even growing a garden just by the look of colors of plants mm -hmm. and flowers can give us energy you know mm -hmm. it's not just about the, you know breathing fresh air cracking your window a little bit at night sleeping in a cool environment and just getting fresh air outside of a building because you know we're always inside buildings and now we're inside of our homes <laughs> and our homes have become our offices. Mm -hmm. And then we just go from that to our car and then <laughs> right. there's no box. fresh air. That's right. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of boxes. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Fresh air is so key. That's great. And those are some really easy tools and tips. I think people can do to recharge that battery, which is so key. And that's, I wanted to kind of talk to you about the stress factor because you know, and if you could talk about how stress then affects the battery, because <laughs> I think that's a huge topic that our listeners and everyone is just like, okay, we've had stress has gone up <laughs> a bazillion notches over the past, you know, 12, 15 months. And so how is that affecting the battery? What can we do to help reduce that stress load to help the battery? <laughs> Yeah, that's a really great question. So I, I would say, let's just think about stress for a minute, you know, defining mm -hmm. what that is, you know? So let, I use the analogy of the house this time. Mm -hmm. So you're in your house and everything seems great. You know, all the electricity mm -hmm. works, you know, electrically, 
you know, all the plugs work. And then one day you plug in a new appliance into your <laughs> kitchen, you know, and it's a new toaster. You're all excited about this toaster. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you blow a circuit. The lights go out in half of your kitchen. Mm -hmm. So you obviously would not just sit there and say, well, that didn't work. You know, I'll just <laughs> live with it. It'll be okay. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, people would come over your house and they would question or your spouse would question like, <laughs> what's wrong with the house? You know, Who why happened? is this not working? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so that's, so on that note, so first thing we have to remember is biofeedback. You know, if mm -hmm. your body gives you a clue mm -hmm. that something is wrong, your eyes start flickering or you know, you're not sleeping all of a sudden, a rash appears on your left toe, mm -hmm. whatever it is, use that as biofeedback mm -hmm. and something electrically has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Think of it more like an electrical problem. Pain is an electrical problem, mm -hmm. obviously. So those are all, you know, parts of that. So that stress, that toaster, going back to that analogy, could be anything. It could be physical stress. Somebody has an accident. Uh, a trauma of some sort, you know, physical trauma. Mm -hmm. And so that could be part of it. Or maybe they're working out too much. Like mm -hmm. sometimes people exercise excessively. Right. They're like just running for hours on a treadmill, right. lifting heavy equipment too much. So you got to consider that too as a stress, mm -hmm. not getting enough sleep or oversleeping. Those can be right. stressors, physiological stressors, eating too much food, not eating enough food, you know, so like this intermittent fasting is great. And then you hear about people not eating for days, you know, right? like, you yeah. know, so it's like, That's no, not good. You know, yeah. You got to be careful, you know, like, what right. are you eating? Balance. You know? <laughs> exactly. So it's just all about, you know, considering every part of your life, mm -hmm. I think is like vectors, like in, you know, chemistry mm -hmm. and physics, like how are they all connected, like spokes in a wheel mm -hmm. in order for us to be balanced, like a wheel that rolls at high speed, mm -hmm. you have to have everything completely balanced and aligned. And right. when it's not, then uh, we start to feel bumps in the road. Right. And, uh, the wheel could collapse. <laughs> yeah, right. Your cart could totally go off the road. <laughs> exactly. Now, now, emotionally, the other part is, you know, I think that's really overlooked a lot, you know, so the emotional yeah. stress. Mm -hmm. of, so here we are, we're sitting more, you know, that's one a different stress. They say that mm -hmm. that's the new cigarettes, right? Right. It's like, uh, you know, sitting is like smoking, you know, it's very right. simple because we're not moving our organs. Mm -hmm. So I'm a real trampoline guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah, me a, too. <laughs> oh, great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, so I am always jumping on the trampoline. I'm a jumper. And mm -hmm. uh, I just think one of my favorite things to do is jump outside on a trampoline. Mm -hmm. I have trampolines in every room, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, so jump rope on a trampoline outside mm -hmm. is like, you know, drives the oxygen in, mm -hmm. it's like amazing for the body. Yeah. So get moving, you know, to take care of that stress, get your electrical system going. Because when you start losing your power, Mm -hmm. mentally or physically, then you are losing power. And so you have right. to get it back mm -hmm. by going outside, getting fresh air and doing all the things we talked about. Mm -hmm. But emotionally, I think that it's important, like, uh, you know, when we start to feel stressed, you know, when we're worried about things or feel mm -hmm. fear, that's an emotion, you know, right. kind of address the emotion and find out usually it's associated with a, a thought, you know, a thought process. And so I think we need to learn how to think differently. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe in, you know, like we always start our days off with a positive thought, mm -hmm. uh, positive podcast, or you right. know, read, we always read the word, you know, scriptures in the morning, mm -hmm. but you got to fill your mind with positive things when it's empty first thing in the morning. Right. And then that really helps push away the waves of mm -hmm. uh, fear. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's very important to reset those circuits. You know, so you have a lot more power than people realize, you know, yeah. with, you know, resetting the circuit. So I call it like going outside your house and resetting the circuit and turn the lights back on. Like, right. You know, switch, don't, don't switch. Think, yeah, exactly. You don't like kneel in your kitchen and say, oh man, it's all over. You know, <laughs> right, I'll I'm never doing... get that toaster back. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so it sounds like the, we have the tools to recharge that battery, even in the times of stress. And I really like that emotional component that you brought into it because so many people have been under such a state of chronic stress. And, you know, when we're in that change in our nervous system for such a long amount of time, our brain and spine and body is connected. And I really like too, what you said about how, you know, <laughs> sitting is a new cigarette, <laughs> unfortunately. And the, what are some of the ways that, you know, people can get up, up off their butt, <laughs> you know, some like tips. I, I liked how you uh, talked about the trampoline, but just some ways like, you know, 
whatever, just some ideas that you might have for helping people to change their lifestyle with this new, new life that we're living in where we're having to a lot of, you know, sitting and interacting and having that electrical charge be in our butt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say you know, give yourself breaks. I think, you know, it's mm. important to move like every hour, you know, yeah. there's Apple watches and different watches right. that tools. remind people mm -hmm. some, yeah, tools that, mm -hmm. so follow that program and set goals with the watch, if you will, that's the easiest way. Yeah. Most people aren't like self-disciplined to remember, you know, they <laughs> right. get into their work. Or the time goes by. About <laughs> seven hours later. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I think mm -hmm. those are the best reminders, you know, cause mm -hmm. it's right there. Right. It's just follow the the stats on your watch try to set a goal of 5000 to 10000 steps minimum you know mm -hmm. and then because those goals will drive you because then you know you have to do something right every <laughs> hour otherwise you'll never catch up unless you're walking at midnight you know and then i think it's really great to walk around the block like mm -hmm. if you work at home which most people do yeah you know think small think right. small breaks you know and so small charges really work. You know, you mm -hmm. can supercharge your body and your brain electrically just by going on a quick run and a jaunt. In fact, before doing this podcast, I just did laps in the back <laughs> nice. and back and forth in the sun, right. you know, yeah, it's like oh, well, yeah. It's so easy. Right. Totally. Oh, that's great. I really liked how you talked about taking little breaks and having a reminder, because I think that's so key because we do have to recharge the battery frequently. It's not like, you know, we're not a an electrical car where we can plug in overnight and then recharge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think people for, you know, they do think, and you did mention that sleep is so key, but we need a lot more of interval frequent, frequent charging <laughs> throughout yes. the day instead of just having like one period, because I think the, some people have changes in their sleep. Now their sleep patterns, especially with the electrical stimulation of, and technology but I really like that. What you said about frequent charging. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So it kind mm -hmm. of reminds me of Thomas Edison, you know, I believe <laughs> don't directly quote me this, but I think he was the one that the inventor that, you know, used to take super naps, you know, power naps. And so <laughs> I, I bet he, he did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He you seems know, he like a power napper. Busy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, for inspiration and all, like he would uh, sleep with a steel ball in his hand. Mm. Right. And then when the ball would fall, you know, he'd wake up. And so uh, those are just great examples. It can be like 20 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. set a goal. You don't have to go to the gym for hours to get right. exercise. It can be five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great way for people to kind of move into the new era that we're in, in doing this frequent charging instead yes. of, because we are in a whole different type of working environment. And we have to think about new ways to recharging the battery at home. And like you said, in the car and, you know, and having the frequent trips and getting outside. Now, so not everybody lives in California <laughs> where, right. it's, where it's nice weather. I like the weather here has been kind of up and down in Asheville. So I'll do my exercises inside. So that's totally something that the listeners can do too. It's like outside is great, even if it's just for five minutes, but exercise is also key and do it in your mat on your trampoline. Like you mentioned, wherever you can. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. So then you can just, you know, like be near a window, mm -hmm. you know, when you do something like open the crack, the window if possible yeah. to get the fresh air, the light, mm -hmm. and then the movement, you know, and then the hydration go for some water first. Mm -hmm. So then you're getting all four, you know, right. the charges. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's wonderful. And so let's, if we could also talk a little bit about the mental health picture, we talked about stress, but about the anxiety and depression piece, because I think that's also a huge component of the electrical system, especially when we're talking about our neurotransmitters in the brain. And what are some ways that you have seen in your practice that kind of like that particular organ, <laughs> that system, that battery is really has shifted for people over the past you know, year with the pandemic. And what are some ways that people can start changing that piece, that mood piece, which I, I think we talked a little bit about emotional piece, but I think we, I'd like to dive a little bit deeper there for our listeners. Yeah, no, that, that is a super great point about anxiety and depression. And so, you know, I really believe that it's about energy flow, mm. you know, so when somebody feels anxious, let's just think of it like driving a car, you know, mm -hmm. so if we're in a car with somebody and they started speeding through the lights, you know, <laughs> and they're going through red lights, you would feel anxious. 
You were like, wow, this guy's going to kill me. You know, (laughs) right. I got to get out of this car. Mm. And then there's depression, which is the opposite. The guy's Mm. driving so slow. He's trying to get on the freeway and he's just like depressed, has no motivation and no drive. Mm -hmm. So neither one of those is great, but that's literally what's happening. It's an energy flow problem. So literally, I believe what's happening is we have too much energy flow, which is anxiety. Like you're trying to move, you right. have all this energy, you have nowhere to go, mm-hmm. right? Because you're not using it like for exercise, right? Bottled or up. you don't have any energy mm-hmm. and you're depressed and unmotivated and you can't get out of bed. Right. So the best way to regulate, you know, energy flow in the body besides therapies like acupuncture and whatnot mm-hmm. is, uh, and herbs can help too, mm-hmm. but it's really to teach your body, retrain your body through exercise. Mm-hmm. And the best thing is like a, a garden walk or mm-hmm. forest walking, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Forest I mean, bathing. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Forest bathing. So mm-hmm. that's just really, and I know once again, weather permitting, but you want to just, or say you have a treadmill, you know? And right. so what I believe is that if you do fast and slow intermittent training, Mm -hmm. interval training, excuse me, on a treadmill Mm -hmm. or walking, then those that, you know, fast and slow, and you want to just slowly increase it, you know, over time, Mm -hmm. that you'll actually teach your body how to retrain itself, even on an emotional, physical level. Mm -hmm. uh, You can work both ways. You know, when you work more on the physical side, you get your physical body under more control with the energy flow, then it will affect you emotionally as well. Mm-hmm. Cause then you can sit and listen to somebody and stay focused more. And so you have to work both sides. It's just like walking right. left to right side mm-hmm. to side. It's the same concept. And then emotionally, you know, if you need a counselor consulting, we do something called brain therapy, mm-hmm. brain training, neurofeedback mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. works really well. Acupuncture is great. And so uh, we just have to work on both sides, you know, of the mm-hmm. equation. Yeah, and then, totally. And then you'll stop going through red lights. <laughs> Right. Yes. <laughs> Don't be running red lights. And yeah, I really liked how I had this image of this bottle, right? Where we have everything is kind of like stuck in the bottle and the anxiety is just going, going, going because nothing can get out of the bottle. So are there some acupressure points? Now we can't do you know acupuncture over the podcast, but are there some acupressure points that you could describe to the listeners, maybe like two that would help to move the energy from the body up into the brain back and forth, so to speak, to allow that flow that you're just talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, there's two that I can think of right now <laughs> that they're really effective. I mean, there's like a thousand, right? There's a lot we'll of points. <laughs> probably don't have enough time. Right. Yeah. Don't so, <laughs> yeah. So the two points, first of all, you kind of reach for the back of your head mm-hmm. and with your thumbs, mm-hmm. so just imagine you're reaching to touch your neck and there's mm-hmm. a thumb on each side of your, the back of your neck called the occiput. Mm-hmm. And then you'll find this ridge. So you go from the center of your spine where your spine and your head connect and then drop down into this ridge mm-hmm. and you'll feel that ridge, right? Yeah. You feel uh. it? Right. So then <laughs> you massage those in space. <laughs> gallbladder 20. Mm-hmm. And so that'll really just massaging that with your thumbs and using mm-hmm. your fingers as an anchor on the back of your head and leaning forward and back mm-hmm. and just finding the tender uh, spots. That's a good one. Will will really mm-hmm. open up. And then you can also do tapping. Mm-hmm. Tapping is oh, another yeah. way to mm-hmm. tap, to open. So those are the the major points for the head, I would say. Great. And then the other one is your thumbs. Mm -hmm. So your thumbs in Korean acupressure is Mm -hmm. actually the brain. Mm. So it's really great to just kind of massage your thumb and do it on either side Mm -hmm. and on the middle and even on the back, which would represent your neck. Mm. And so it's really, we're talking about the top portion of the thumb. Right. And really squeezing it. Don't bite your thumb, but just squeeze it. (laughs) And then you can also kind of, bend it over like you're trying to, you know, pop your knuckle Mm -hmm. and that can also open your neck Mm -hmm. area. And Mm -hmm. you can also physically move your head at the same time, right? Bobbing your head around Mm -hmm. as you open up the circuits electrically, like a switch through your right. Oh, so those are two major areas. Yeah. Awesome. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah Cause uh, I think, you know, the, that's what it's all about is just having the little things, especially when those are easy to do right when you're sitting, <laughs> you could even be Absolutely. having, you know, yeah. your Zoom call with your, your work associate or, or whatever, but right. the, the little things you can do to help get the energy flowing. Yeah. That's great. Your, your boss doesn't even have to know. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you can uh, put the, what is it? The, the green screen. 
Okay, let's switch uh, topics here and talk a little bit about like the change in Western yeah. medicine. And I think that I really like the, how you look at things from this holistic standpoint. And I'd love for you to talk about like, why do you think we're having such a shift in the way that one, things are being, I don't know, diagnosed or um, misdiagnosed or what, you know, why is the doctor missing specific things <laughs> in, in your, in, you know, cause I think we're, we both see a particular type of patient most of the time coming in. And, you know, so then my brain thinks, well, why is this person, what, what's being missed? Why is this pattern repeating itself? That's, that's, I guess, my bigger question here. Why do you think that pattern is repeating? And why are so many of those things getting missed? Like thyroid disorders, you mentioned metabolism, weight loss issues. And is there an electrical current issue happening that's really the root cause of those? Yes, I, I really believe that, that there is, there's a reason why that's happening. And the, the main reason is that our thinking, our viewpoint, you know, of how we get sick is mm -hmm. the problem, you know, mm -hmm. so the ancients, you know, whether it be naturopathic or chiropractic is still mm -hmm. very holistic, you know, mm -hmm. viewpoint, you know, acupuncture, the same. And so, because you have to look at the whole person, but, and that's the way it used to be, you know, because it was more allopathic type natural medicine back in the 1900s, you know, mm -hmm. before drugs came along, right? Carnegie mm -hmm. and Rockefeller and all of that, you know, we really had to rely on symptoms like, for instance, they would leave a urine out, a urine sample outside the door. Mm -hmm. And if there were ants that came to the urine, that it was a sign of diabetes because mm -hmm. sugar was spilling over, you know, right. into the urine. So it was just a simple concept. So, but, and then we also cooked differently. You know, we were, we had to grow our own food. So when we became disconnected from the food and from our bodies, Mm -hmm. And the concept was here, you got a problem, take a pill, right? If you mm -hmm. take this pill, your headache will go away. And then just call me in the morning if you need another pill. And <laughs> pill then syndrome. so, th <laughs> yeah, so then we're just basically pharmaceutically, we're inundated, you know, from the time we're children mm -hmm. in front of the TV watching cartoons, we even told what kind of cereals to eat, mm -hmm. you know, what to ask for our doctors for, but nothing about nutrition. <laughs> and there's no connection. It's a disconnect between. So it's just like a linear thinking mm -hmm. of, you know, you got a problem, do this. Right. You know? And so as you and I both know, when we see our patients, you know, we look at the whole picture. Yeah, exactly. And so that's the difference is taking the time to do that, mm -hmm. taking more time, looking at a bigger picture. And uh, from an ancient medicine point of view and acupuncture and the electrically, since we're talking about that, I would say, I always tell my patients, I say, you know, the problem with blood, Mm -hmm. If you just use blood alone, it's only 7% of the problem or the solution. <laughs> right. And they say 7%. I said, yeah, well, you know, that's how much blood you have in your body is about 7%. You're missing so, all the other batteries. <laughs> exactly. The other batteries, the other, other <laughs> bubbles. The other bubbles. <laughs> that's what right. happened to those guys? <laughs> exactly. So we got to look at everybody, right? And right. So, so that's what I tell them. So that's why we do the scans. Mm -hmm. and that's why, you know, saliva testing, which right. you, know, you do a lot of that and I do too, you know, saliva mm -hmm. testing, other cultures, hair analysis, mm -hmm. give us a better picture, a whole picture holistically, which is why it's holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. So in the second part, the reason why we've gotten away from all this, you know, as far as Western science is that it's become a science. It's right. become, you know, I've heard of doctors, and this isn't a criticism. I just think that it's the science of trauma. Mm -hmm. you know, they're really good at trauma and plasma, and they're so focused on the tree <laughs> in the forest that they forget that there's a forest. Right. And so that can be really helpful because sometimes you need blood transfusion. Sometimes right. we need something like that to save somebody's life, which mm -hmm. I honor, you know, surgeons and all of yeah. that. But you can't stay in that world because you won't fix the forest. You'll mm -hmm. just end up, you know, burning the forest down if you right. don't focus on the whole <laughs> you know, problem and how it's all integrated electrically. Mm -hmm. and so that's what we have to, so the integration of connection and synergy is totally different than isolated nutrients, like even vitamins, you know, when mm -hmm. people just isolate, you know, nutrients and vitamins, reductionism mm -hmm. thinking, right. It's really the, the summary, you know, as we just keep thinking linear, like, okay, I don't want to, you know, like it just cracks me up this, <laughs> this story real quick. So yeah, I remember this guy telling me, you know, he wanted to lose some weight. He says, mm -hmm. now I don't want to go crazy. I just want to lose some weight, you know, like, just give me the pill. 
and I'll be out of your office in a few right. minutes. You're like, I don't do that. <laughs> right. I'm saying, I'm sorry. I can't help you. I think yeah. you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong, yeah, in place. The wrong place. You know, you want fin fin or something that's going to destroy right. your heart. So, yeah. So anyway, so with that said, you know, it's the same concept. Like you, we can't, you cannot grow a farm, you know, in one day you have to you know, grow <laughs> right. food as a farmer. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have to pull the weeds, mm -hmm. prepare the soil, and you have to do something to contribute to your health and your electrical power each and every day. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you'll lose your crop. You'll have nothing to eat and you'll starve. <laughs> and so most people are out there starving. Mm -hmm. They're being overfed and undernourished. And right. So that's really, that was kind of a long answer, but that's it. No, that was great. <laughs> yeah, I, I loved it. And I, you know, I think what a real key there too is the nutrition aspect and people have such a disconnect now from even, you know, they're not everyone, but a majority of people are shopping at stores and not growing their own food. <laughs> you know, I don't know what that percentage is, but I know it's really low. <laughs> yeah. You know, in, in, I think that what I've found myself, cause I work on a farm and I, I grow my own just, I have like a tower garden of vegetables and I grow my own, you know, herbs and things like that. But even if it's just something small, like even if you're just going to have like a little basil plant on your kitchen counter, just so you can connect with the actual plant and your, cause it does have a little bit, it has a switch. Like you're talking about with the electrical current. It's like, Ooh, I see the plant. I water the plant. I give the plant nutrients. And then the plant gives me nutrients back. <laughs> yes. That you is know? so great. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I think small. we've had, yeah, start small and then, you know, even maybe connect with your neighbors and community. We, we have a little bit of community gardens here where I live, but not a lot, but if you know, grow a tomato plant, share it with your neighbor. There's a lot of ways that we can create community, especially as we're moving into a different time period on the planet where community is key, you know, for survival, I think. Yeah. Excellent. That's actually part of my dad's philosophy when he mm -hmm. was alive was this, he loved to grow vegetables. Once he learned how to do that, mm -hmm. he had such an amazing ability, you know, green thumb. <laughs> that he shared his vegetables, you know, and that led to communication and, and just more talk about you right. know how to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it starts with the soil. It really starts with connection, connecting mm -hmm. back to the earth as a big battery. Yeah. And you were talking earlier about how those components and the earth, we're, we have that terrain where we are establishing ourselves, our body, all those organs out, those batteries. And if that terrain, our own soil is clogged, dirty, <laughs> detox, detox of toxic, then we know that we can't grow our own environment in a healthy way, which I think is kind of like everything that you've been talking about today, which has been so powerful. Let's talk about some ways that people can find out about some of the amazing things that you're doing, Scott. So you have your own podcast and what's the name of your podcast? Yes. So it's the podcast. Yeah, it's <laughs> Life-Changing Health Tips with Scott Summer. That's right. Life-Changing Health Tips with Scott Summer. And you also have a book coming out too. And the book is The 12 Pillars and Vitality. 12 Pillars of Health and Vitality. 12 pi Pillars of Health and Vitality. Awesome. Yeah, when so when is be, that coming out? I would say sometime in the summer. Summer. Nice. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Summer of 2021. We're excited. Uh, super excited. And what's going to be kind of the, I mean, 12 Pillars, I can tell the theme, but what, what can you talk about a little bit just briefly about that book for our listeners? Yeah. So what it's going to be is really an uh, introduction to my journey and mm -hmm. then what somebody else can do, like no matter where they are in the journey of life is to figure out what system is, you know, which batteries are low mm. and, and, you know, not working mm -hmm. and what you can do about it. Like we just talked Great. about these health tips yeah. today. So mm -hmm. it's really about health tips, lifestyle changes and food as medicine mm -hmm. and uh, inspiring words. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that sounds yeah. great, Scott. And your website where our listeners can find more about what you do and, and purchase your new book when it comes out is summerholistichealth.com and that's with an O <laughs> uh -huh. and with an S summers holistic health. Nice. Oh yeah. Cause it has an S at the end. Right. Perfect. Summers holistic health.com. Yep. Great. Okay. Wonderful. And one last question for you today, as we wrap up things, if you had an unlimited budget right now, what would you do to use the money to change the planet, to make the biggest impact on our current state of the planet? That is an awesome question. <laughs> I would say to really feed people real food mm. and teach them how to grow their own food. So mm -hmm. really about be about food and education, getting into the schools, 
mm-hmm. and uh, the homes actually, because now the schools are closed. But right. I would say, yeah, it'd really be about about food. It'd go back to farming, and that's our goal: is to ultimately get some land mm. and have our own animals and, mm-hmm. and, food and to teach people just that. So oh, teach yeah. people how to grow their own food, eat the food that they grow, and uh, live a healthy, long life based on the blue zones. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's easy. That's an easy one. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I love it when there's like this a great easy one that the, the guests have. That's a great one, you know. And it's so key, just like you're saying, it's so important to have that nutrient, that nutrition, in with uh, within everything around us, our environment, our community. Because when we have that base of good food, you know, it, it, it's amazing the changes that it does for your body and for everyone around you. <laughs> yes, in fact, you know, on that closing note, I would say mm-hmm. that I tell my patients, I say, you know. You know, every 90 days to 120 days, something amazing can happen if mm. you change your diet today. Mm-hmm. That's and right. they kind of look at me, they say, well, what do you mean? I say, well, your red blood cells, you get a new set of blood, mm-hmm. like a blood change or <laughs> right. an oil change every 90 to 120 days. So if yeah. you keep doing that four times a year, mm. then you actually get a new body. Yeah, that's so key. I love that. That's why seasonal detoxing is so important because we need to have, give our body a break to eliminate the things it doesn't need. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah, that's great. True. Okay. Thank you, Scott. It's been a joy to have you on the Genetic Genius today. Thank you for taking the time. Likewise. Amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Lula.